What's up guys, today I'm going to show you how to make this really cool abstract motion graphic. Um, you can make it in Blender 2.8 and all it takes is animating a cube, a few cubes and an echo sphere. So once you have Blender open, you're just going to delete this camera. So hit, click on the camera, X, delete, and delete this light, X, delete. Okay, so select the cube, hit the tilde key and hit 8 so that we got it on the top view. Click on your cube, go to modifiers, and add a wireframe modifier. I put the, uh, the thickness to about 0 0.03. Now, hit Shift A, add a mesh, and you want to add an echo sphere. And uh, leave it as it is, and just hit S, 8, and scale it up to 8. Now, select the echo sphere, hit the tilde key, hit 3. And then hit the tilde key again and hit 7. Now click on the echo sphere, go into edit mode by hitting tab. And now you just want to select the x ray option here, so show x ray. Now that's basically going to let us select all the polygons, including the ones behind the ones in front, if it makes sense. So if you, sorry, so if you select faces and then just highlight the top half. Hit X and you want to hit Dissolve Faces. So click on that. Now, if you come out of X ray mode now, you'll see there's still one face left here. So, what we're going to do, we're just going to click on that face and just delete that. So, hit X and just delete faces. So, now we've got, we're going to be using this little semi sphere um, to basically do all the work for us. So it's going to reflect the light of the cube. And it's gonna, it's gonna, we're gonna animate, and it's gonna look really cool. Just hit the tilde key, and hit eight, so it's top view, and then tilde key three, just to reset the position. Now hit Shift A, add a mesh, and add a cube, and just scale that down to about there. Now add a modifier, and add a wireframe modifier. And we're gonna make that a bit thicker. We'll say point. 08. Apply that wireframe and hit Shift D X 4. I click on the middle cube again. Shift D X minus 4. Now click on the middle cube again. Shift D Y 4. Now click on the middle cube again. Shift D Y minus 4. Click on cubes 1 to 5. And we're going to join these as one object. So just hit Control J, and now you'll see that's one object. Cool. So now we're going to just do a quick animation of the uh, of the cubes. So bring the timeline up, and we're going to make this a five second animation. So do 120 because we're at 24 frames per second. Now click on this middle cube here, and come to the transform settings. And we are going to rotate it on the Z axis. So apply keyframe. Make sure you're on the first frame of the animation. Um, apply keyframe here. Come to the end of the animation. Onto 121. And we're going to put 360 on the Z axis and apply a keyframe. Now when you hit play. Okay. You'll see it's rotating. That is cool, but I don't want it to rotate on that origin. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to go to the object mode, object, set origin, and do origin to 3D cursor. Now when you hit play, it's going to spin from the middle cube. And you can see that little orange circle has moved to where the cursor was. Now I'm going to do a little animation for this cube, this separate cube here. So click on this cube here. Go to transform settings and apply a keyframe on the X and the Y. Go to one two one, and do the same thing. 360, 360, and now apply those two keyframes. Cool. And now, just going to animate the echo sphere. So, do the exact same thing. Rotate it on the Z axis though this time, and we're going to do minus 360. So it spins the opposite way to the way the cubes are. Cool. That's looking pretty awesome. 
So hit Shift A, uh, add a camera, and we're going to hit Alt R just to reset the rotation of the camera. Now hit zero, and that's basically the camera view. So what we want to do now is hit G, Z, and just bring it up. So if you go, if you hit zero, that toggles the camera view. If you hit G, Z, and just bring it up to where you want it, I think, I'd say bring it up to about there. Okay, cool. So now we're going to start shading this. So if you go into rendered mode, hit Z, eight, that takes you to rendered mode. So we're going to add emission shaders to the cube, and then we're going to add, we're going to make the echosphere reflective. So first of all, let's shade this cube. Click on the cube, hit the tilde key, hit three, and zoom right in. Make sure the wireframe modifier has been applied. So hit apply, and come here to the material section. Make the base color grayish and make it fully metallic and just leave the roughness where it is that's going to be our base material now we're going to add some shading to some of the faces so with that cube selected go into edit mode select one of the faces ensure this bit selected uh, select one of the faces now hit select and go select random and we are going to make sure it's at 50% and just push the seed up to somewhere where you like it. I'm going to put it about here. So back into your material settings, make sure you've clicked the plus button. So this little bit comes here and then add a new one. Now on the drop down, change this to an emission shader. And we're going to go with a nice blue, I think. So if you just pull that here, Pop the strength to five and now hit assign and you'll see that's going to shade some of these blue now we're just going to go to our render settings tick ambient inclusion bloom screen space reflections and motion blur now bring when going to motion blur put the shutter up all the way and with the bloom just turn the intensity down a bit and also come to your world settings and we want, to make, we want to make the world black now zoom out a bit or hit zero now you can kind of see what the echosphere is doing with the reflection you see so we're gonna shade the other cubes now so click on the cube five and come to your material settings and just add a new one and we're simply going to make this one an emission shader and we're going to make it a nice sort of nice sort of yellow I think pop the strength up to about 10 click on your echosphere and we're going to start shading this now so add a new material and we're going to change the base color to a grayish and we're going to make the metallic fully fully up and we're going to bring the roughness all the way down just pop that down to zero there you go that's starting to look really cool right, i'm just going to take these overlays off now so we can get a more true view of the animation cool all right now click on your echosphere and hit s and if you hit z if you scale it by the z axis you can really sort of change the way the reflections work so the fur the longer you make the z axis the more reflections you're going to get it creates this really cool sort of kaleidoscopic kind of pattern so yeah just go mental put it to wherever you want it if you want more yeah i'm going to pop it about here now one last thing to do I'm just going to come out of render mode, so Z6, and I'm going to animate the Echosphere. And I'm just going to animate the scale on the X axis. So I'm going to make it sort of go like, you know. So I'm actually just going to redo these rotations. So 
just on the echo sphere. So I'm actually going to delete these keyframes. So click on the echo sphere, hit A, X, delete keyframes. Okay, come to the start of the animation and we want to first do the scale. Um, add your two keyframes at 60, add it to 14, 14. And then go to one, two, one, and bring that back back down to eight. Now, hit A, T, and change that to Bezier so we get a nice smooth bounce. Now we're gonna just do the rotation now, um, but we want that to be linear, not Bezier, otherwise it will. Uh, it just won't loop as well. So if you um, now apply the rotation again, so bring that back to zero. And on the Z axis, hit that keyframe and then the last keyframe, put that to minus 360. Yeah, sorry about that mistake. Hit the keyframe again, there you go. Now we're gonna go into random mode and look at that. Pretty cool, isn't it? Now, just gonna go to your bloom settings, bring the intensity wherever you want it. I like a bit less bloom. And that's pretty much it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Um, next thing to do is just to render it. So if you come to your render settings, so if you come to your uh, scene settings, um, change the output here. Um, just save it somewhere other than the TMP directory. Uh, if you, I just set up a folder called Blender Renders, and I just call it Blender Two. Yeah, and then hit accept, and then over here, make that an FFmpeg video, and in encoding, you want that to be MPEG four. And on the codec, leave it as H.264, put that to perceptually lossless, and then that's pretty much it. And all you've got to do is hit render and render animation, and you just got to wait for it to render. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, if you feel like you gain, gain value from the tutorial, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you very much.